Offering time. Blessing time. The Lord is good. And all the time. Amen. Let's go to Mark 10, 28 to 30. You know, all things we do is very risky, you know? I don't know about you guys, but I love risk. If you don't, don't cross the road. If you don't love risk, don't drive your car. If you don't love risk, don't even get out of bed. Because when you get out of bed, you can drop dead. So stay in bed. Yeah. No, you can't drop dead in bed. You sleep, sleep away. So I love risk. But all the risk we have to uh, you know, accommodate, we're not sure of the outcome. You know, everything would, you know, can you imagine somebody preparing four years for an Olympic event? No, four years is small. Yeah. For eight years, you prepare for an Olympic event and then get to the track and the whistle blows and you have a muscle pull. Cool. I went to the Olympics. And I had a muscle pull. <laughs> I'm back. I'm Olympian. Right? You feel great. Or can you imagine studying for that special test? For that special test. You get ready and everything is, you know, you feel great. Then you walk into the exam hall. You, still, you guys still walk into the exam hall? I still do. You walk into the exam hall. And you open the first question and you go blank. <laughs> and you say, I went to examination hall and I went blank. Praise be to God. <coughs> Life is full of risk. But you, you know, we are so afraid of risk that we are afraid to follow Jesus. Because following Jesus is risk, you know? Somebody will come onto your face. Somebody will not like you because you smell like Christ. You walk like Christ. Somebody, you know, everything about it is, is, so, is so dangerous. And because of it, we go into our shell. We don't even want people to know that we are believers because you don't want to offend somebody. It's a risky business. Offense is a risky business. Let's go to Mark 28, 10, 28. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospel, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. So you know, in the early church, People identify themselves by sacrificing all to follow Jesus. Now, we don't even sacrifice anything to follow Jesus. Right? Nobody's telling you to leave your home or sell your home and give it to Wellspring. You say that is very cruel. I'm going to sue. <laughs> Nobody's saying, you know, abandon your family or anything. Do something radical. Some people actually do it and go to, for missions. Right? But here, nobody's saying, telling you sacrifice <coughs> everything like Peter and his guys did in those days. But the amount or the intensity of your sacrifice actually equates to the compensate you will get. Because if you are shooting for 
If you want to be the first in anything you're going to do, you have to put in more effort. You have to train harder. So when you sacrifice all, you expect God to be true to his word, to give you 100%. If you sacrifice 1%, of course, being human, you expect 100%. But it doesn't work that way. 1%, you get 1%. That's law of nature. 100%, you get 100%. So what are you sacrificing? Just your tithe. Just your offering. Just your 10%. Nobody's saying sell your home. But Peter and his group sacrificed everything and followed Jesus. But you know why we don't sacrifice to follow Jesus? It's tucked in there. We don't like persecution. <laughs> because when you sacrifice, even when you give all, you are going to be persecuted by somebody. So we don't like it. That is painful. So we say, no, 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 no. We won't give so we don't suffer persecution. Because if we give more than 10... No, if we... If we if you try to give 10%, then that means we will sacrifice something someplace. To us, that is persecution. You know, think about it. If I give more than $1 of what I want to give, wow, that's my Starbucks coffee. That tempts me. So I'll, No, I won't do it. But Peter said, we have sacrificed all. And Christ says, I'm assuring you that the amount of sacrifice you get, you give, you will get 100% of that. I want that 100%. Can we sacrifice something to make God proud of us? To honor God? To glorify God? Because when we give, we are glorifying God. And he said, I will make sure you get 100%. And with that, you get persecution. But at the end of it, you will come out smelling like rose. If you look at from Genesis to Revelation, everybody went through a risky decision to follow Christ. Look at Abraham. He was called from his comfort to go someplace he didn't know. Look at John at the end of Revelation. He was abandoned in an island to suffer. But that was the place he saw the glory of God. So for every sacrifice we make into the kingdom of God, there is a compensation for that. God is true to his word. Offering time. Blessing time. Blessing time. The Lord is good. And all the time. So let's give. Let's start sacrificing something cup of coffee make your own become a Hebrew brew your own coffee Let me share this thing I came across this morning. Is it English language very wonderful? I came across. Like if I was just walking and then came out on my path, I came across. So I came out. <laughs> Wait, this is from Roy Lesson. And he says, you know, if you don't know what or how to describe our Lord Jesus Christ. He just says this. He said, call him. His footsteps are your guidance. Call him the way. His majesty is your worship. Call him mighty God. His presence is your delight. Call him wonderful. His truth is your foundation. Call him rock. His will is your purpose. Call him Lord. His kindness is your comfort. Call him shepherd. 
His promises are your hope. Call him faithful. His riches are your supply. Call him provider. His fellowship is your reward. Call him life. His authority is your confidence. Call him king. His return is your hope. Call him omega. His heart is your home. Call him love. Amen. Amen. I love that. And I just wanted to share with that. So pick up one you want to call him. Pick up any one of them. 